Hey guys, how are you all? My name is Harshit Devedi friends and I welcome you to my video. So in this video friends, I will be talking to you regarding types of aquatic organisms and the types that I am going to discuss with you are Neuston, then Periphyton, Plankton, Nekton, Benthos. Why I am discussing these types of aquatic organisms friends because this Neuston, then Periphyton, Nekton, Benthos. So these are types of words which you normally don't hear. So obviously when you are attempting an exam and an exam, these terms come in front of you. So you will obviously get confused with them. So that is why I will give you a basic idea about these words in a separate video of this one. So that you become very well acquainted with them. And when these words are coming to you in front of an exam, you are able to attempt them quite properly. This plankton, this plankton is a very general word friend. So obviously plankton sort of three types, zooplankton, phytoplankton, bacterioplankton, I will be discussing them in my video also. So friends, before starting, I would like to tell you that all environment and ecology videos have already been uploaded by me. So you can refer to the playlist of environment and ecology. The link is in the description box below. This video is in English friends. If you want to watch the Hindi version of the video, the link of that is also given below. The very first topic that I'm going to talk about is Neuston. Neuston is obviously a group of organism. They include Whirlgig, beetles, water striders, spiders, protozoans, some worms, snails, larvae and hydra. What are Neustons? These are organisms which are, you know, there is surface of the water, surface film of the water. So either they are on the top of the surface film of the water or they are on the bottom of the surface film of the water. So they are found on top of or attached to the underside of the surface film of the water. So on the surface film of the water at the top, these organisms are there and at the bottom they are there. But one thing you should always keep in your mind, friends, these are not planktons. Incidentally and frequently, planktons also come to the surface of the water. But planktons are not the same as newstone. Newstone and planktons are different category. Keep that one thing in your mind. If we talk about floating plants, so floating plant is an example of newstone and not plankton. So floating plant, you very well see the example of lotus and some other flowers and plants in the aquatic ecosystem. So they are basically floating plants and these floating plants belong to the category of Neuston. Okay. So this is Neuston. Coming to plankton, I talked to you about plankton. So here I am talking about phytoplankton, but planktons are of three types, friends. The very first type is plankton. Second type is zooplankton. And third type is bacterioplankton. This is the normal classification of planktons. Okay. So planktons are floating organisms, algae, diatoms, protozoans, larval forms. They are actually planktons. Now, as I told you that there are three types. Phytoplankton. So this phytoplankton, they have chlorophyll in them. These phytoplanktons can capture sunlight. They can do photosynthesis and they can convert uh, you know, the particular power of sunlight, chlorophyll, nutrients into chemical energy, that is, they can produce food. Okay. They consume carbon dioxide and release oxygen. So, obviously, during the process of photosynthesis, we say that oxygen is released and carbon dioxide is, uh, you know, consumed. So, one source of dissolved oxygen in aquatic ecosystem is for the process of photosynthesis. Okay. So, that is why these phytoplankton become very important. And all phytoplankton are capable of doing photosynthesis. Now, we talked about phytoplankton. What is zooplankton? Friends? Zooplankton feed on phytoplankton and zooplankton, they are not capable of doing photosynthesis. They depend on phytoplankton for their food. Some examples of zooplankton are protozoans and crustaceans. Now, when these zooplankton feed on phytoplankton, some small fishes feed on zooplankton. So basically phytoplankton are eaten by zooplankton. Zooplankton are eaten by small fish. Small fish are eaten by bigger fish. Bigger fish are eaten by whales and dolphins and etc. etc. Okay. So you it became clear to you two classifications of plankton, phytoplankton and zooplankton. A third classification bacterioplankton. There is not much to discuss about bacterioplankton. These are some algae and bacteria which are essential for nutrient cycling in a water ecosystem. As simple as that. Okay, they just contain some bacteria which are important for the cycling of water in an aquatic ecosystem. Okay. Now, friends, one important fact about these planktons is that they these planktons they don't have 
लोकोमोटरी पावर देयर लोकोमोटरी पावर इज वेरी लिमिटेड सो ऑब्वियसली वॉट विल बी द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ प्लैंगटॉन विल बी डिसाइडेड ऑन द एक्सटेंट ऑफ करंट इन द एक्वेटिक इको सिस्टम सो वॉट विल बी द फ्लो ऑफ दैट इक्वेटिक इको सिस्टम दैट विल डिसाइड द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ प्लैंगटॉन इन एक्वेटिक इको सिस्टम बिकॉज प्लैंगटॉन on their own can move very less their flocomotory power is very very limited almost non existence so they move according to the currents of the water this is basically phytoplankton coming on to our next classification this is periphyton what is periphyton periphyton is actually a complex mixture of algae cyanobacteria heterotrophic microbes and detritus okay they are attached to submerged surfaces in most aquatic ecosystems okay there is one more related terms to them that is of which a u f w u c h s it is known as surface growth or overgrowth so this of which and periphyton you can say these two words you can say belong to the same category so this periphytons and of which are small animals and small plants they adhere to open surfaces also to submerged surfaces also they are attached to the rooted plants the leaves of the rooted plants so these are basically periphyton it is important to understand what role these periphyton play in the aquatic ecosystem they are two to three most important roles of periphyton the very first important role of periphyton is that it is a important food force for invertebrates tadpoles and some fish this is one thing that these periphyton do the second thing these periphyton do is they absorb contaminants the pollution in the aquatic ecosystem is absorbed by this periphyton and they actually remove the pollutants up to a certain limit from these water column and aquatic ecosystem so the moment of pollutants and contaminants in the water ecosystem is limited by periphyton the third most important thing that this periphyton do that they are a very important indicator species they give us an idea about what is the water quality of this of the aquatic ecosystem so periphyton actually are very sensitive to changes in the aquatic ecosystem they are very very sensitive if the ecosystem changes if the pollution comes in ecosystem they will immediately show a reaction these periphyton because they are very sensitive to the change in aquatic ecosystem okay one more important fact about aquatic periphyton is that periphyton have diverse number of species they have diverse number of species not diverse number of species will thrive only in a productive aquatic ecosystem and if the aquatic ecosystem is transforming from productive to non productive there will be changes in this periphyton so that is why periphyton becomes very important and this is the role of periphyton that i explained you here moving forward friends the next thing that i am going to talk about is nekton this term nekton it was proposed by german biologist ernst haeckel now what this nekton refers to nekton refers to those group of organisms you know which are actively swimming active aquatic organism see right now we talked about planktons and i told you that planktons capability of moving the locomotory power of planktons is very limited okay they don't have that much capability so that they can swim freely against these planktons there is a category of organism known as nekton so nekton according to ernst haeckel they are active swimmers in a body of water that is they can very well swim in the body of water they can be animals of small size of you know they can be swimming insects and they can be large blue whales so these are basically those group of organisms which can swim very easily in the water they can even swim against strong currents in the water okay sometime it becomes very difficult to classify between differentiate between this plankton and nekton species but you very well understood that what basically is nekton actively swimming aquatic organism the next group of organisms you can say precisely to say community of organism is known as benthos they live in benthic zone i have already explained you benthic zone but once again i will explain you benthic zone here in this figure see this is basically from here this water is actually starting so i'm here starting from here okay this 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 going on this this so basically this area this area actually comes under benthic zone so benthic zone is actually attached to the bottom of the water see friends water is here you can see the water level is here but the land is here this is abyssal plain so obviously the bottom land 
so the waters which is near the base of that particular water body that comprises the benthic zone and it is not that that benthic zone will be present at the deep ecosystem the moment the water starts benthic zone also starts okay so benthic zone can be on the coasts also and benthic zone is also present in the deep of the oceans also so benthic zone is present everywhere it is also present in freshwater ecosystems like pond water pond streams lakes it is also present in marine ecosystems for example sea and oceans okay so basically these are the community of organisms that live in the benthic zone or you can say that live near the seabed river lake stream bottom they live in the benthic zone actually so this community lives in marine water fresh water sedimentary environments it lives in tidal pools lives in continental shelf it lives in abyssal depth so basically here you can see this much is continental shelf this much is continental slope this much is abyssal plain so obviously these benthic zone and benthos are formed in everywhere now one important fact about these uh, benthos are that for example in oceans or in a deep lake suppose i am talking about an ocean or a deep lake so here you can see the bottom of the lake is somewhere here or the ocean is somewhere here so this will be a actually benthic zone so when the water column is high it will be putting a huge amount of pressure on the benthic zone so obviously when the pressure of the water from the top is quite high in this benthic zone the organisms that are living deep inside the water body in the benthic zone they have adapted themselves to high pressure okay and when they have adapted themselves to high pressure they can survive only in that high pressure so if you are going to bring those benthic organisms to the top layer they will die and these benthic organisms they feed on organic matter which drops from higher up layers to the lower layers you very well know that the process of photosynthesis goes on in the photic zone so there all the primary production is done and when that primary produce the organic matter after decaying goes downwards these benthos feed upon them so you can say they feed upon the dead and decaying matter so benthic food chain contains a lot of dead and decaying matter they are also known as scavengers detrivores so a whole lot of scavengers and detrivores are also present in this benthic zone so a big amount of detritus food chain is also present in the benthic zone okay now this benthic zone is also present in the bodies of fresh water so basically this i have already told you that they are also present in marine water ocean seas they are also present in fresh water lakes rivers and streams so i hope this video was able to explain you all about this topic the five types of organisms that i have discussed you here so if you really like this video kindly like this video friends subscribe to my channel also please through your comments tell me that how you are liking this video and what type of videos would you like and please share these videos on your instagram profile friends and on your facebook profile that will give me a whole lot of views and if you want to do something from me this you can do so thank you for watching friends have a great day goodbye